Welcome everyone, welcome to another preview. This is Metal Canyon, and we'll be checking out a game by Owlcat Games called Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. Which is, fantastically enough, a proper RPG in true Owlcat fashion in the 40,000 universe of Warhammer. And I absolutely love the 40k. Let me just continue the game before I start uh, babbling too much. Now, <clears throat> first of all, I will not claim that I know, you know, a whole lot about 40,000. I love the setting, I love the lore, but I don't know loads about it. I'm actually going to reduce the sound a little bit, master volume. Let's actually, let's do it like this. Music. There. There's a lot of setting, uh, just like in any... Owlcat game, really. Uh, by the way, Owlcat did, for example, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, which was an amazingly good uh, RPG in the Pathfinder universe. D&D, &D, pretty much. So, you can expect a lot more of that here. Before we begin, though, I would also like to say that this is a fairly early-ish build, which means that there's bugs, there's unfinished stuff, um, there's a lot of polish that's still missing. Uh, so, for example, I don't know, where do I check that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, things you cannot pick at avatar creation or, I mean, uh, character creation. Uh, there's a lot of backstories you cannot do yet. Uh, anytime you level up, there's a lot of missing icons and stuff like that. And I feel like there's a lot of polish still mi missing, especially with uh, animations and such. But anyway, like I said, I don't know that much about the lore, even though I do love what I do know. Uh, but apparently a rogue trader is basically someone in the 40k universe that is, well... Uh, is a human and uh, works by exploring the outer reaches of the human empire so that's pretty cool so right now we're on our void ship and uh, we will have to go to another part of the oh yeah we could talk to someone we'll have to go to another part of the uh, sector here by flying the ship um, by using the map here lord captain so as per usual with these types of games i'm going to try to avoid too many spoilers uh, i will show you some of the stuff but i will mostly try to avoid too many spoilers uh, because i do feel that these games deserve to be played if you're interested in them and uh, experience them yourself oh that's well that was weird as you can see, just just flying about. So, because this is an owl game and it is an RPG, there is a lot of text involved. Uh, there is some voice acting, but most of it is text. So if you don't like the stuff like Baldur's Gate 2, uh, Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous, you might not enjoy this either, because like I said, there's a lot to read, a lot of dialogue choices, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of um, pretty cool descriptions as well, as you can see. Sister Argenta looks tired. There are dark circle, uh, circles under her eyes. Her hair is somewhat disheveled, and she moves like she's a little on edge. Rogue Trader. It's also very cool that whenever you have a word... Um, highlighted like this you can hover over it for a quick little description an imperial subject with a unique hereditary title a rogue trader is tasked with exploring ex exploiting the still uncharted regions of the galaxy for the benefit of mankind and you can also right click to get more about that in the encyclopedia so you get a bit more uh, explanation you said you have the personal request for me i indeed have a request rogue trader the accursed servants of Chaos who assaulted the ship took the lives of your loyal crew members, and they orphaned many children, including the progeny of the brave officers who defended their posts until the bitter end. I don't know what customary practices there are for cases like this on Von Valencia's territory, but in the world I'm familiar with, the children of such brave souls could expect to receive some special consideration. Perhaps the rogue trader could meet with the orphans. What good would meeting them do? Now. Like before, in uh, other Alcat games, there is also some sort of a, 
morale system in here. So you can be either, uh, you know, strict and abide by the laws, which are usually very brutal. Uh, you can be benevolent or you can just be, uh, well, you can sort of fall to chaos, I suppose. Make arrangements for a meeting worthy of a rogue trader. I will address the orphans with a speech. I will meet with them. No formalities needed. These are uh, the children of people who gave their lives for the von Falancius dynasty. My consideration is the least that they deserve. Deliver this order on my behalf. The, or uh, the orphans are to be properly provided for. But a personal meeting with a rogue trader is too much. Why would I? Do you wish to fill these children's heads with the illusion that the world and its rulers care about them? I will have no part in this. So you can see... There's a pretty wide selection of things um, uh, you can do. What good would meeting them do? These children are the future of your crew, and one day they too will have to stand against evil and heresy as their parents did. By meeting them, by speaking the right words to them, you will honor the memory of the fallen heroes and light the way to the heroes in the making. They will always remember the day they met the rogue trader. Besides, it will bolster the orphan's spirits. Help them recover from their loss, which can be hard for someone so young. Okay. I will meet them. No formalities needed. We're gonna be benevolent. I will pass on your instructions. Thank you for taking my request to heart. Oh, so we go straight to that. The Empyrean's unswerving hostility towards anything that challenges its laws and dogma has calcified over thousands of years. An Imperial subject who deviates from this sanctioned hatred risks their very life. Yeah, it's pretty bad in the Warhammer 40k universe. And there's the children. The motley group of children and adolescents don't take their eyes off you, gazing at you as if you were a creature straight from a fairy tale. Are indef... indefatigable? What? I haven't even heard of that world before. Our indefatigable sister has been keeping an eye on these pups. Abelard glances at the gathered children. It is hardly the Scola Progenium in here, but we have provided the orphans on our ship with adequate care and instruction. Argenta is standing to the side of the group next to the youngest visitors. You notice her giving them looks and inconspicuous gestures of encouragement. At your approach, she perks up and announces, her voice ringing. Brave ones, the master of this ship has appeared before you. The one who guides it through the darkness of the universe by the Emperor's will. Greet your Lord Captain, the rogue trader of House von Valencius. Uh, address the children solemnly. Children of the brave servants of House von Valencius. I, the rogue trader and Lord Captain of the ship, speak to you now. Your parents gave their lives for a just cause and brought honor to the von Valencius banners and those of the Imperium. I am proud of them and I believe that you will become their worthy heirs. Smile at the children. Your Lord Captain greets you, brave ones. Address the chaperones. Give them treats and escort them to their homes. I believe a minute of beholding the Lord Captain is a great enough honor for them. <laughs> the Lord Captain greets you, brave ones. The children keep staring at you. A little girl who has remained close to her genta smiles uncertainly. A skinny pale lad tries to throw his shoulders back and stand at attention like a soldier. And several other children follow suit. Only a few teenagers at the far end of the row seem sullen and not particularly impressed. Suddenly, all the sounds in the module are drowned out by a very loud sniffle. It has the effect of a dam burst. You now hear whispers, sobs, and subtle grumbles. One of the older orphans, a teenager with a thin scar across his face, tosses his head back and says bitterly, So what? Why should we care? Our friends and parents died in their dozens for your noble lot, and you just give us speeches. Argenta quickly turns to the boy. A flurry of emotions flashes in her dark eyes, like she wants both to calm him and scold him for impudence. The, comport uh, the comportment of these children leaves much to be desired. I hope that they will be molded into worthy servants of House von Valencius. This audience is over. <laughs> Spang the troublemaker. Put the rest back in their cabins. This audience is over. If you have things to say, say them without fear. I will listen. Rest assured, you won't be abandoned. You will be taken care of. So let's let's see what they say. The boy smiles grimly, not at all like a child. It doesn't matter what we say. It won't bring our parents back. And it won't change our fates either. We'll keep slaving away on this ship until we drop and die like our folks. Or worse. 
I understand your grief and dismay. Your parents died. It's not an easy thing to go through. But they gave their lives for the truth, for the good of the whole ship, for the Imperium. Do not speak of their honorable fate with anger and disdain. When the pirates who killed your parents attacked the ship, I was there. I took command, I fought, and I repelled your, uh, the assault as quickly as I could. But no war can be won without losses. You can only strive to do what is within your power. The strong have the power to decide the fate of others. The weak either obey or die. If you seek a different lot in life, boy, save your grumbling and look for an opportunity to rise above the rest. Spang the troublemaker and the, uh, the same thing. So, I understand your grief and dismay. You heard the rogue trader. His words carry the wisdom of the Imperium. It's hard to say whether or not your words have left an impression on the boy, but he nods slowly, then he catches himself and gives you an au awkward bow. Abelard gives a sign, and servants immediately emerge carrying packaged treats with Von Valentian's uh, emblazoned on the wrappers. It appears that the Seneschal came prepared for any contingency. So you have a bunch of helpers, of course, and, you know, I mean, basically you're in command of all the people. Oh, they're throwing treats to them. Argenta rubs her temple pensively. She smiles at the younger children, offers a few more words of encouragement, then leaves the bay. Oh, are we gonna have more here? You can also see that the environments are nice and detailed. And, like I've said before, um, there's a lot of text in the game. And very interesting text if you, you know, read it. All, which I suppose you should, because otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose of a game like this. There's a lot of lore, a lot of uh, fluff. Anyway, let me show you some combat. And before I do, I can also show you the map where you basically travel. Um, we... Wait, is that our ship? Why are we here? Oh, because we were going to Rikad Minoris. So we were at Urak 5 there. And um, we're still in the star system, but apparently there's also quite a lot more outside the star system. There's our void ship. And the cool thing is, you've got your hull integrity here, which means that there's going to be space battles as well. And you can, you can see there's a lot of uh, resources you can gather. Like Prometheum, me mechanisms, plasteel, weapons, xenotech, and so on. So there's a lot of stuff. Um, I think this is like the game version or something. Um, there's also this part where you've got void ship weapons, shields, aspects, and so on. So everything here can be upgraded, replaced, and so on. It's really cool. Look, you've got the speed, inertia, damage reduction, bonus. You can repair stuff. Um, there's the shield. So that's very, very cool. I'm actually looking forward to seeing how uh, combat is going to unfold there. So let's go to... There's a starport here. Uh, the prison planet. Oh, wait, scan is required. Yeah, I'm gonna show you some combat first. Let's go to the unidentified void ship. And hopefully that's not gonna be too many spoilers. Okay, we're gonna skip this. Also, <laughs> before we do some combat, I wanted to show you a little bit about uh, inventory management. Um, there's plenty of items you can gather, there's plenty of resources you can gather, and not all of them actually go into your inventory. A lot of the stuff, like resources uh, for your ships, go straight to the ship, even while you're out on a mission and exploring. But you get different weapons with lots of stats. You get, you know, melee weapons, which are pretty powerful, usually. Pistols, you get melted charges. You get staves. Uh, sorry, these are multi-keys, so basically lockpicks. Uh, various documents and such you've picked up that give you clues as to how to solve something. Uh, how to solve something. So, a lot of cool stuff. Um, and a shotgun as well. That's cool. Um, but the thing is... At least for now. See, I'm here um, trading with someone, and it says this stuff costs PF and zero RP. Now, what is PF and what is RP? I have no idea. <laughs> um, which is to say, there is a lot of nomenclature in this game that's a little difficult to wrap your head around, unless you actually go into... Um, the encyclopedia and read about it. For example, 
let's say this stuff is fairly you know reasonable it says like this one on the very right laser gun says six to eight damage um penetration zero so that's fine dodge reduction 20 um not really sure. Rate of fire is 4. Recoil is 10. Uh, range is 10. Max ammo is 40. And then you've got single shot costs 1 action point, and burst fire costs 2 action point. And it also shows you what kind of line you will be attacking in, or whether it's just a single uh, target. 10% of ranged weaponry cargo. So a lot of this stuff is quite fine, but then you get to the really crazy stuff, which are skills. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't think I can really show you skills here. Um, but they get all sorts of calculations. And they tell you that how stuff is calculated, but in a way that um, has abbreviations for the various stats used in the game. And a lot of the times I find myself going like, um, I have no idea what that will do but it does give me a buff so i'm going to use it <laughs> so i think a slightly better tutorial on the specifics of some of the stats would be nice it already does explain to you the penetration and stuff like that but yeah this is sort of a case in point i'm here seeing pf and rp and i have no idea what any of this stuff does um so we do have fifteen thousand rp something points rogue points i'm not sure Anyway, <laughs> let's continue. And just one more thing before we actually do combat. I've loaded a game where uh, my people are about to level up. We so, when you want to level up, you can multi-class as well. You can either uh, advance your class that you've picked, or you can select an additional class. So for now, I'm going to upgrade my marksman routine. And uh, first of all... Apparently we can select a characteristic advance, so I'm going to select a more ballistic skill and then a talent. As you can see, all of these are pretty much without uh, icons for now, which was the case in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous as well before it was released. So, not a problem there. Um, it just looks a little bland right now. Um, so it doesn't so this is what I wanted to, to show you before when I said there's a lot of different nomenclature in the game after the marksman deals damage to three different enemies their next attack in the comet will deal additional plus 10 plus two times marksman's BS bonus percent damage so <laughs> there's a lot of calculations going on and if you don't know what marksman's BS what what is the BS um, I'm looking at the left. Ballistic skill. Okay, so I guess that's ballistic skill. So you can also expand this, uh, but it doesn't really tell you much. So this uses ballistic skill, uh, but a lot of them have even more stuff in them. Um, and it's all like this, plus five, plus three times, you know, ballistic skill percent damage to enemies. So you can't really calculate something quickly at a glance, for example, unless of course you're good at math, which I'm not. Um, so let's see, so three times marksman's uh, ballistic bonus, so that would be 120%, so five plus 120% damage to enemies? Would that be 125% extra damage? I don't know. Either way, um, let's do fired up. Yeah, each time the marksman deals damage, their critical hit damage is increased by 3% until the end of combat. To summary, there we go. And apply selections. And then you can, can go to the next one to upgrade the fighter. For example, epicenter of slaughter. Let's do that. And toughness, so he's got more health. Adept, she's our psyker. Um... So let's give her more. No, let's give her more uh, perception. The nice thing is when you're upgrading characteristics, you can hover over it and it'll tell you about every other party member's uh, characteristics. So, for example, Seth has the highest intelligence here. Well, Seth is my main character. So I'll just go for perception because... Um, oh. Wait, 50 to 55... Unsanctioned Psyker. So she is by far the highest with that. Okay. Let's do tech use. 
because hers is the highest, and apply. And then we've got our marksman as well. She's got a cool uh, bolt gun, ballistic skill, and then unpredictable. I like that one. All right, so let's continue to um, combat. We see some enemies around here. Now, unlike in I won't in weakness. Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, for example, there's, um, there's cover in this game. You have to use cover because, of course, there's quite a few ranged weapons. Stand firm, which we must not let the miscreants defile House Orselio. So now combat will start, and it's all turn-based. And uh Take a knee oh. and bow before me. There we go. Them. First of all, we have to place our characters into position. You can see that we have uh, cover everywhere. So, for example, this is half cover and this is full cover. And full cover is actually quite powerful. So, this is kind of a bad position here. Um, I'll hide over here with Seth, even though he's, he's going to be kind of exposed. Now, um, my guy here is a melee uh, monster, so he's going to be here taking out the flank. And then we've got the Psyker, who's going to hide behind cover here. And we've got her, who's going to kind of hide behind here. Let's start the battle. So there's single shots, there's auto shots. Um, as you can see, this is an auto shot, and it can hit many enemies multiple times with that. There's also piercing shots, there's penetration, which can penetrate cover. So, let's see what we can do here. We've got a 75% to hit. We could actually go for a burst fire here. You can see that he's going to have a 60% chance to be hit. And 20 and 15 over there. Depends on, you know, where, where we point the weapon. So let's do it like this. Suits my purposes. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. That was lucky, actually. So now I'm going to use an ability called Shot on the Run. The Marksman gains plus two plus Marksman's agility bonus um, uh, divided by two movement points. Their next attack costs one action point less, suffers a minus ten ballistic skill penalty, and does not count towards the limit of attacks per turn. So as you can see, I've, I've used up all of my movement points because I've attacked, and I've got two action points remaining. Now these only cost uh, one action point, but I've already shot, so I can use Not this. For me. So I'll be a little less accurate, but I can attack one more time with 49%. Nice. Excellent. What is that, actually? What is that? Revel and Slaughter available. Ah, the marksman gains plus 10 ballistic skill. Critical hit damage and critical hit chance. Nice. The, abil uh, the ability is available after killing three enemies. Excellent. That's actually really good. Alright, and now he's pretty much done his stuff. We've got Rebel in Slaughter, which we can do. Uh, the kill counter is not reset. Cooldowns rounds one. Till the end of combat. Let's Nothing do it. I can't do. Now... This is nitpicking, and of course, they couldn't really do that much uh, about this. But in Wrath of the Righteous, because it's a D&D &D and there's lots of magic, of course, here, here we've got Psychers, which is kind of like magic, but there's lots of magic there. Every sort of ability like that could have some sort of, you know, magical, cool effect going on. But here, because most of these people are just people, they're not really Psychers, um, you cannot do much apart from, like, maybe scream or you know, beat your chest and stuff like that, so, you know, just pointing it out. Ouch. Okay, so Argenta here has some pretty cool abilities. Uh, Grand Swarm him. Uh, there's also this, by the way, which is Momentum, a special combat resource required for using the unique abilities called Heroic Act and Desperate Measure. This, uh, these abilities can only be used once per round and for the entire party and once per battle for each character. So, for example, you know, once we build it up, um, we'll be unlocking certain Heroic Acts and Desperate Measures, which we can use. And, um, like I said, they're pretty powerful and can only be used once per character per combat. 
So let's see what she can do here. 69, that's pretty good. And if she was to do this, that wouldn't be really very good, no. 32, no, let's just do a normal shot. Now, because she's got a uh, bolt gun, I'll do it. this is gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> I love that bolt gun. And she also has a shot on the run. Faith without deeds is worthless. I probably should have moved uh, closer, which I'm actually going to do now. By faith. Let's see, 70%. So these guys are gone as well. Yeah. Doubt is for the weak. Oh. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Let's end the turn. And Adira now has a bunch of buffing and debuffs abilities and also psychic attacks, but she also has a laser gun herself. Um, or lace pistol, sorry. So let's do... let's do study enemies first. Which says, the adept randomly distributes int intelligence bonus stacks of clue marks among its enemies in a four square radius within a 10 cells range. Clues remain until the end of combat and can add insight, a characteristic that increases damage against the studied enemies. If the adept hits a target with clue, it deals an additional damage plus perception bonus and insight. Uh, removes one stack of clue and provides plus one insight to the adept until the end of combat. So a lot of stuff going on. But you can do it like this, for example. <laughs> Was, was that you? Or... And now we get a little bit of... Uh, well, he's got three clues on him, so... But it doesn't matter, because these guys only have about four health anyway, and they die fairly easily. So let's use Psychic Shriek. The Psyker attacks the creature by focusing all of the will behind one, uh, one massive Psychic Shriek. Um, the cool thing is... Uh, where is it? Is it here? Yes. Veil Thickness. When psychers reach deeper into the warp to power their abilities, there is always the chance of the Empyrean bleeding into our reality, a factor that is invariably destructive and damaging. Untouched Veil is the current state. Low chance to trigger psychic phenomena. Each round Veil Degradation decreases by one. Veil Degradation decreases to its previous Veil state after the battle. This state can never be reduced in the current area. So the cool thing is, once psychers use their abilities, this goes up. And once you reach a certain point, well, bad things can happen. Uh, even demons can tear through uh, into real space you know, and cause havoc. I haven't had that uh, happen yet, but it's pretty cool that it can. Well, that was a psychic attack, so now you can see that has filled up a little bit. Um... To commander, I didn't actually say anything about it, but yes, it has increased now. So unfortunately, a um, Abelard is all the way over here. Uh, I don't know if he can actually attack him. If I was to use charge, no. Let's see if I can actually attack him from here with our melee weapon. His chain sword that he uses is extremely powerful. Yes, he can. At your back and call. Nineteen. Also, that stuff that you've just heard, that... Blah, 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 blah. I don't know what that is. It sounds very cool. I love it, but I have no idea what it does. Uh, or why it's there. And I cannot charge anyone, unfortunately. So we're, go we're going to use Endure uh, to reduce all incoming damage. And we're also going to Brace for Impact. Um... Yeah, sure, why not? There we go, and that's a daring breach. Immediately restores all AP and MP and gains additional movement points. Yeah, why not? No Let's do it. The cost. So now we can actually take that guy out, or both of these. Let's do that. My place is at the fall. He can really move far. So now we'll do a slash, which will hit both of them. Your back and call. Ah! And he can still move and get this guy. Absolutely insane. I love it. It will be done. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Unfortunately, we cannot do anything else, but yeah. You can also get stacks of wounds uh, that, you can, ow, that you can heal with, um, with med kits or by resting on the ship. 32 only. 
Next Commissar, single shot, single target, uh, applies the following, becomes marked. Let's try to do that. Even though we're we're not really going to hit this. It's only 32. We might get a higher chance. It would be nice if it also told you what the chance will be if you move to a different area. Yeah, 32 still. Oh. I actually hit him. Very nice. All right. And then, after the combat is over, you can uh, group loot, which means you will be looting all the stuff in a certain area. Um, so, for example, we've looted everything over there. We can loot everything here at once. So we're getting some weapons, some armor. Uh, no... Um, Victory awaits. No supplies yet here. But you can see the combat can be really cool and interesting. We've got a data crypt here. Uh, there's also various places where you can use your skills, like this. You can use your lore, and it's going to use the character with the highest lore available to try and... Go as I'd hoped. Oh. It seems as if a skillfully crafted sculpture is about to step down from the podium. But now we can use another character, which also failed. Another character also failed, and another character also failed. I believe you can all try it with all four. I think. Um... Anyway, this is how combat works. It's quite satisfying. The weapons sound good. Uh, the abilities are pretty cool. It just takes a little bit of reading and such. And I feel like there's a little bit of polish still missing on the animations and such. Otherwise, you can see that the environments look fantastic. They have that Warhammer 40k feel. You know, this is a space station, but it's basically a chapel, like most of humanity's stuff is. It's that all, everything is a chapel to the Emperor. Um, you can also open up your map to see where you might have missed loot and such. That's, that's maybe something I would say is a little bit of a negative. Sometimes it's difficult to find things. It's about time. Um, for example, when I was playing this myself a little bit, I got completely stuck here beyond these doors because I killed these and then I went something through... Of There's a, There's a trap here. Let's uh, disarm that with the demolition skill. The Emperor favors me today. There we go. Got some goods here. We got some goods here. Now, as you can see, these go to cargoes because these are shipment of low sticks, acorns, and great flasks, and vat meal cakes. Um, so that goes straight to your ship instead of to you. So, yeah, I don't know how, but I've completely missed these doors. I think because I was looking at li like this, and I never hovered over this. This was, of course, my fault, but sometimes it's a little difficult uh, to find little things. Although you can press Alt and Not hold it, and that should uh, that should show you things next to you or nearby. So I don't want to show you too much because, like I said, the story is pretty cool. The, the really nice thing is we fought humans right now and you do fight a lot of humans, but you also fight chaos. You also fight other things I won't mention. So that's pretty amazing that there's quite a few uh, enemy varieties out there. Um, and a lot of text, a lot of lore, a lot of story. Um, and yeah, I think it's just going to be a lot of fun, especially because it's Warhammer 40k, um, and it's done by Owlcats, who I'm pretty impressed with. Anyway, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this little preview. Like I said, didn't want, didn't want to show too much. Showed you a little bit of combat, RPG stuff, dialogue, uh, map travel, uh, ship upgrades, and uh, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.